The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everybody. Can everyone see my screen and hear me? Perfect. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, like we always do, I like to really zoom out and then and start from a, a, a bigger kind of top-down approach and then drill down to the smaller degrees. Um, so relevant to our trading, I think, you know, we can, we obviously talked about even the bigger macro view in terms of this move completing five waves up from the 2009 lows um, and, and what that might entail in terms of, of even a larger magnitude once this move completes. Um, but I think we still have plenty of rally ahead, although we are getting into um, the more challenging bit where we're going to start having some fourth wave consolidations um, should have at least two. Although when we talk about the NASDAQ, we'll see that we can certainly be topping in the parentheses wave three in the NASDAQ. Um, but maybe that um, instead of getting a fifth and then another fifth wave, maybe the NASDAQ gets after its fourth, it gets like a choppier ending diagonal that stretches out for its parentheses wave five, while the S&P gets the fifth of three and then a fourth and then a fifth. Um, what we've talked about, you know, just uh, uh, the other week um, was that we, we can be coming into the top where, where the either we can still be just in the circle wave three of the three of parentheses wave three, rather than topping in all of this wave three. Um, and that's what we're going to take a look at when we look at the smaller structure here, as well as the overall FIB structure, is, is what really count, is how this actually counts best, um, whether we are topping in um, the minor degree wave three, um, or in where that should ideally top, or whether we have another four or five inside a higher version of this. Um, so while we're on this screen, um, before we switch over to the other tab to look at a little bit more detail, um, you know, what, what Garrett and I see as fitting best with most of the individual sectors and individual names um, is a one, two, three, four, five waves up into the June high as wave one, um, a small running flat in the S&P, and we've talked about this before where the RSP, the equal weight version got a lower low. So this is a larger magnitude move as a consolidation for the parentheses wave two into that later June low. Um, and then we have a five wave move up for the wave one of three. Um, we're projecting our fibs. I'm projecting it off of that higher low from the later low in June. So that gives me a 5086 level for the 1382 extension, which is the ideal target for that wave three. If we get the minor degree wave three close to at least the 100% extension, which is what Fibonacci pinball says. And that is just shy of the 4400 level at 39 at 4395 in the S&P. It's about 4420 to 4430 in the S&P futures, that's because I use a continuous contract which rolls um, every quarter from whatever the, the previous front month was for the futures into the new, the new futures month. Um, if we are able to get another fourth and fifth inside the third, and that's why I have this labeled in green here, um, implied by these two green notes, whereas we're only topping in this region maybe before we actually get to 4,400, cl closer to the 4,300 region, topping as this three, and we get a smaller consolidation, and then push up closer to the 4,800 region for the three. In that case, then after we get this four, which would still come back down towards the 3,900 region, we could then target the 5566 level for the parentheses wave three. And we can go ahead and add that as another copy paste for the three, and we'll put it further out over here, and we will increase it one degree higher. So I think this is a really good illustration for the way that I use alternate counts. 
Um, as you can see, there's very little difference between the expectations, you know, we're looking for a local top. The magnitude, if it's this smaller degree three, we're still looking for a top here and possibly even sooner, whereas this would ideally stretch closer to that 4400 region. Um, and maybe the smaller, the green circle four might hold a little bit higher than the 3900 region, maybe only gets down to around um, 3950. Um, instead of coming all the way down, maybe under 3,900 for this four. And then instead of getting a move up as the white five of parentheses three to 5086, we would only get a move towards the 4,800. But then after another consolidation, that allows us to get even higher for this parentheses wave three. And they would probably move up this target a notch higher as well later on down the road. Um, but that's a little bit more of an aggressive count. I think the more conservative thing is to consider that we are just topping in the third here, especially because the NASDAQ already counts one degree higher than that. So now when we zoom in, um, I'm going to an hourly chart so that we can see just the fifth wave structure. And I still have on my on this tab, which is my Uber accelerated bullish tab, I'm still trying to count this as the primary and I've added in that more conservative count where we're topping in the yellow in the three um, and minor degree as the yellow and that um, still comes out at, at 44.23 here a little bit better but as we saw on the other chart just the sometimes the fibs the the snapping at a larger degree um, catches a, a slightly different low and looks a little, just a little bit different and that's a little bit closer to 4400 um, but when we look at this five wave structure which is the fifth wave of whatever this third is whether it's it's the parentheses wave five of the circle three or whether it's the circle wave five of minor degree wave three in yellow we still have a very similar subwave count off of the early march low as one two three four and working on the fifth wave of that um, yeah, sorry, let's go back to that sentiment stages. So the difference between Avi's count, um, we'll just call it Avi's count. I, I'm not sure if, if Mike G is, is similar to Avi or similar to Garrett and I, um, but he's counting a larger parentheses wave one. I don't know if he uses parentheses. He has a problem with uh, using the preferred nomenclature uh, because he has to type, manually type in the labels. He doesn't use a program like Motive Wave that helps organize those degrees in the official Elliott Wave nomenclature. So if you get an opportunity, harass Avi, especially if he's still having issues with TradeStation to get him to move over to Motive Wave. Um, but he has his equivalent parentheses Wave 1, the intermediate degree, at the August or at the September 2nd high. And then I think he's counting this as a running flat for the wave two. So his wave three only starts right here and it's based on a larger wave one. So he still has the potential for this to be a more nested count inside a, a, uh, an intermediate degree wave three that might project well on up to the 6,000s. So I don't think you really go wrong by being a little bit more conservative. And I think that the structure here, you know, he's going to consider this a potentially another wave one and a wave two consolidation. We're looking for a little bit of a deeper consolidation here as a fourth wave than he'd be looking for as a wave two. Um, but we still are seeing five waves up completing into this 4300 to f maybe figuring out a way to stretch. And we'll look at saying what has a better chance of stretching up towards 4,400 because that's really the ideal if it's gonna be the yellow three. Um, but we do have inside this five wave up move off of March in the fifth wave of that, we can count one, two, three, four, five waves up that we're in that fifth wave of that fifth. So we're getting very close to that potential local top. But despite saying that we're getting very close, there is certainly room for a lot more extension. Some of these final moves, uh, and, it's, and it's a difficult task when you're talking about trans, translating Elliott Wave um, as a pure analysis theory into um, practical trading application. 
because we do have to realize that the risk skew at this point is to the downside. So you should be starting to make sure that you have exit plans formulated for your positioning or starting to think about your hedging process or, or how you want to handle if you want to do anything, or maybe it could just be mental preparations for this potential move down towards the 3900 region or maybe even a little bit below whichever fourth wave that happens to be you have to balance that that doesn't mean sell everything here and go full short because things can extend you know you could get a blow off top that that gets so much accelerated beyond just being a fifth wave that it, it ends up needing to count this as maybe a, an alternate fourth degree wave here, a smaller third, the smaller third completed, and then maybe this is the circle three here, this is a small running flat for the circle wave four, and this is a one two start to a more extended fifth wave. Don't see that as being a high probability in the S&P, um, but understanding that things can extend and, and that an ideal extension at least would be up closer to the 4400 to 4420 region means that you know this is not a clear setup to start putting a bunch of leveraged short positions in place. It is a time to maybe raise some cash so that when we do get a consolidation that we have some good capital to deploy, but we're still very much in the heart of a longer term bull market. So most of you who are longer term investors, even though you're traders also, you know, should not be looking at going to 100% cash or a net short position um, if that's not normally the way that you trade, you know, in a bullish trend. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, I want to switch over and go to um, the ES chart now to look at the subwave structure inside this move off of the May low. Um, for what we're looking at in terms of the next high. And we will get to RSP, but I also want to first take a look, before we go to the RSP, I do want to look a little bit closer at the Dow, um, because whereas I, where I said there was potential for a, a larger fourth wave to be in place, maybe as an alternate here, that really looks like that's what the count is in the, in the, in the, in the Dow. And so if anything is going to get more immediate extension, it does look like some things in the Dow can outperform. Um, all right, let's go to this tab that says nano counts and let's switch it up to ES. Um, and let's go back to an hourly chart so that we can see all of our price action off of the, move this out of the way. Um, so we can see all of the price action off of that May low. So again, I'm using the yellow as a as as the alternate color here, but I think that is probably the more prudent count. Even though getting closer to the 44s is going to be more ideal in terms of pure Fibonacci pinball, we do have all of the requisite subwaves completing that looks like the um, the fifth wave off of the May low of the that fifth off of the May low. So the fifth of the fifth does look like it is targeting closer to the 4320 to maybe 4350 region for a top. Um, as we said, we can certainly get more extension than that, um, but I don't think we can rely on more extension than that. I think we do have to, to treat that as um, some pretty significant resistance and, um, you know, anything beyond that, you know, just you can use trailing stops and, you know, have some fun scalp days. But most of the, the risk skew at this point should be um, preparing for a consolidation that can come back down into the 3900s. Um, so, and I think that will probably more prudently count as the yellow four even if we don't get all the way up to the 4400 region for the yellow three, if it tops a little bit closer here. Um, counting this as an ending diagonal off of the May low. So this is an ABC move up for wave one, an ABC move up for the third, an ABC retrace for the fourth. 
that overlapped with the top of wave one, and we should get an A, B, and a C wave move up for the fifth wave. Um, we have what easily counts as five waves up. Since we have five waves up for the A wave, um, that implies that this is an ABC is a zigzag instead of flat. In a zigzag, Elliott wave guidelines suggest that the B wave does not, should not retrace much more than 38.2% of the A wave. That is not a hard and fast rule, though. That is just an Elliott wave guideline um, for the structure known as a zigzag. Um, ABC structures really, you know, I don't think are as formal as R and Elliot laid out, and it was laid out in the Frost and Rector book. Garrett and I, in looking at the hundreds of stocks that we look at in stock waves, have frequently observed flat structures that are five waves for the A wave and five waves for the C wave and a bigger than 38.2% retrace. So because it's bigger than a 38.2% retrace, we call it a flat instead of a zigzag, but it does have the 535 structure. We have also observed zigzags where it's a very shallow B wave retrace, but the A wave was clearly a three wave move, which is what is normally suggestive of quote unquote a flat. Um, so I think that those are, are just kind of interchangeable moves. Um, most of the time you could say that um, a three wave move can be part of a flat, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get um, a higher B wave um, or a deeper B wave in this case, because we're looking for an ABC up. Um, all right, any questions on the S&P 500 or ES before we move on to some of our other instruments? Nope, okay, let's, uh, let's quickly look at RSP uh, because it is the equal weight version of the S&P, um, but it, it is actually a little bit more similar to the Dow, um, whereas instead of this being a fifth wave of a fifth off of the May low, one, two, three, four, and in the fifth wave like we have in the S&P, the RSP, the equal weight version of the S&P 500, um, did what the Dow did and made a wider flat consolidation here. Now, this can count as a little bit more significant of a move instead of just a fifth wave, um, one, two, three, four, five of the circle three of three off of the March low in the Dow. But here we can just count that as, and this looks like a good impulsive start um, to a little bit more of an extended fifth wave up. So what, what that says to me is that, um, you know, we also do, you know, we, we've talked about how the 53 region was the minimal target for this wave three. So it is also possible if this low breaks at this point, and really if it fails to hold a retrace around 147 would be the first clue that the yellow three actually already topped. Um, but what this says to me is that some of those names that are not the, um, you know, overjuiced uh, tech names that in, in the S&P, um, some of those names that are bigger, um, large cap, you know, more value oriented component names that don't make up a big, as big of a section in the S&P because of the weightings there, but may be a, a significant component of the Dow. Um, do have that potential to outperform. So ideal support in the 147 region for um, potential over uh, more extended final move in the RSP than we can expect in the, the regular S&P 500. And I think a lot of that may come from uh, our Dow names. And so the Dow does uh, a couple of things when we zoom out here we'll kind of go over the, the nuanced differences between this and the S&P, um, and then we'll drill down to that smaller level. Um, the Dow does count better as um, the larger wave one that Avi has and the wave two retrace into the October low um, for parentheses wave two. Um, so from there, that's the green fib extensions are for um, that parentheses wave three. The, the 
early part of this move was really not clear. There's two ways of counting either a one, two here, and then another one, two, or the larger green one, two, which might be a little bit more preferred, certainly based on Fibonacci pinball, with this hitting the, the 0.382 of the green fibs right here. Um, that does allow for this entire structure off of the February low to be a larger wave one and a wave two. Um, but I think we should stick with um, the more conservative approach until it clearly rips through this resistance in the 3600s or 36,000s. Um, so that's what we're going to zoom in on now is that this consolidation can certainly be more significant. It might not be a wave one and a wave two as a three level nested bullish structure which might be a little bit too aggressive. Um, but even, regardless of whether you, you think that this is um, a green one, two, one, two, and then one, two, um, we're looking for a five wave move up towards the 35,500 35, to 36,000 region in the Dow, um, whether that is the parentheses wave five of the circle wave three um, and counting this as a fourth wave, or whether that is just wave one of the much more aggressive green circle three count, um, this part of the structure should look identical. Maybe it holds a little bit lower if it's the green wave one, as opposed to getting, we really should tag that 36,000 level um, before we top in this three. Um, but both of those off of the recent low, we can count a pretty strong looking five up and are working on a small consolidation. Um, ideally heads back around 33,500, but might not necessarily be able to get that low, but support extends all the way down to the 33,300 region for normal FIB zone um, as a one, two setup off of this June 20th low in the Dow. Um, so a lot of potential, not all of the Dow charts look as strong as the other ones. So certainly come see us in stock waves for some of the um, ones that we've picked out that look uh, even even stronger that, that could really carry this count. Um, and uh, we go over a lot of those on a pretty regular basis. All right, now let's look at the um, NASDAQ. And as we said, the NASDAQ got so much higher here, um, it's very hard to count this as an expanded flat because it got so much higher here and didn't and didn't get lower or anywhere close to this low from 2018. So it's already at it, it has another degree inside of it. So I think that's just the three, four of the cycle wave three, but off of this low, um, the March, 2020 low, it, it's, it's does not seem realistic at all to count the September move as all of just a parentheses wave one. And this is just start starting something more bullish. We have individual charts and stock waves that do support that. And if that's the case, those are gonna be explosive. Um, but I think it is far more prudent to count the NASDAQ in general as closer to topping already in the parentheses wave three, that intermediate degree wave three of the whole primary wave five move off of the March, 2020 low. Um, and that this move, the fifth wave here, is likely to be a more drawn out, choppy ending diagonal that has a lot of overlap and takes a lot of time and is very frustrating for some people to trade if they are looking for this to be a, a huge explosive, you know, impulsive heart of a third wave, when in fact it might just be an ending diagonal. If you're trading it, focusing on the potential for it to be an ending diagonal, and it turns out to be far more bullish than that, you can be very pleasantly surprised. But I would rather look for the outperformance from the individual names where this is a more clear one, two, one, two setup forming. And a lot of those are due for a wave two pullback soon. Um, and focus on those charts or the individual sectors rather than trying to um, force the NASDAQ to be more bullish than it might be. Um, zooming in is the name of my chart, the Big Macro 
clean is what I use for the smaller degree um, on the NASDAQ. Here we go. Um, so NASDAQ, I think, is, is most likely completing a, um, an ending diagonal with this as the fourth wave. Um, and so this is one, two, three, four, and we should be getting an A, B, C move up to complete that fifth. I know this is kind of messy because I think the NASDAQ might have gotten a little bit confused that this was supposed to be the fourth wave of an ending diagonal that started back here in October. And I think it's trying to form its own ending diagonal um, off of the March low to line up a little bit more with like the Russell or some other things. So it, it's it's a little bit choppy and messy. I, I think though that if we if you're if we are just looking at this as the purple ABC potential, um, you know, if it is more bullish than that and still just in the third, then it'll hold a fourth and then it'll give us an opportunity to trade for this blue wave five higher. But I think you have to look at the potential that this is topping closer to the 15,000 region as a more significant degree. Um, and support right now really should hold the 14,000 region. Um, maybe you can get down to the 13,900, but any break of there is kind of the first indication of trouble at this point. Um, let's go to the Russell. Um, the Russell, as we've talked about before, was one of the things that, that made us the most confident um, when we were looking at the low in September as a good buy opportunity for a lot of names in stock waves because the Russell very clearly counted as five waves up and an expanded running flat for the wave two. And then into the October low, when other things were making a, some of things were making a lower low than, than the September low or pretty close to it. Um, the Russell at that point was holding this really nice one, two structure off of the parentheses wave two at that point. So it allowed us to be very, very bullish and stock waves benefited tremendously into the start of the year um, from a lot of those smaller cap names. Um, and since then, we hit the 100% extension target right on the nose a couple of times now at this 2316 level uh, for the Russell. Um, there are a couple of ways to interpret the count where this could still be where this could still be a 3-4 and we get higher to 2600 for the minor degree wave three of three and continue to stretch things out even further in time and price for this longer term rally. Um, but we do have to consider, oops, didn't want to do that. Everybody can still see my screen, right? I didn't mess stuff up. Um, we do have to consider that this topped the fourth wave, uh, the third wave, and then maybe we are still even in a fourth. Um, so I'm tracking a couple different things. Maybe that fourth completed here, and this is some sort of one-two start to the fifth wave up, um, which can be heading towards the 2800 region, um, or maybe an ending diagonal, or some other complicated fourth is still in progress if if this low breaks. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to maintain this blue diagonal as a more conservative approach rather than putting the, the pink or purple one, two labels on here looking for extension all the way up to the 2800 region. Um, but it just has really gotten kind of messy and is not the most reliable. But similar to the Dow, off of this June 20th low, it can be far more bullish and that can be a little bit more significant. So at the very least, holding that 2200 region as the low and maybe holding closer to 2250 if it gets any kind of a consolidation, if this is a small wave one and it's getting a wave two, can at least target the 2500 region. And that might be in a wave one and a wave two and an A, B and the C wave up of a third in an ending diagonal for this five of three in the white count and possibly even um, the start to 
a fifth of the parentheses we have three already um, but that 22 we'll say 2200 2215 to 2200 is really key support if that breaks this could all have just been corrective gorp inside a deeper fourth wave where one of these tops was the top two are our third of parentheses wave three and this is not a complete fourth but just corrective gorp before it drops down harder closer to the um, 2000 to 1980 region so keep that in mind in terms of watching your risk exposure especially on you know keep look at individual names and where your support should be there but also keep an eye on the Russell as a whole because there could certainly be those negative feedback loops. Um, if support starts to break, then it starts a chain reaction. And even though some things look good for a little bit, um, they they may not be strong enough necessarily to, to out um, to hold out against a bigger drop down like that. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, we can take a look at oil, and then we can take a look at uh, natural gas. We can take a look at the metals and the miners. That's not the right tab. Nope, that's not the right tab. There it is. Um, all right, as we talked about last week, um, we can be looking at, I don't even know where the, there's the, parentheses wave five that seems a little bit excessive um, in oil we can be in a third wave of our parentheses wave five off of a very shallow fourth wave the bottom back here in March so we got five waves up for wave one we got a nice flat consolidation for wave two Got a small little move in consolidation and then it had been moving along nicely. So we got to the 100% extension, got another consolidation that can count as our fourth. Um, normal resistance is gonna start at the 7630, but I would really like to see this move be just the wave one of a little bit more of an extended move here as the fifth of three that takes us up closer to the 79 region in oil. Um, and then another fourth wave consolidation, maybe this drags on and, and just holds a high pennant or something um, to allow things to continue to consolidate without dropping too much and then get a fifth wave up, maybe close to the 92 to 95 region. Um, maybe at that point, it starts to get some extension to get over hundred, but um, right now that is a pretty good target pretty extreme already target for a top um, still no questions i'll just keep plugging along but uh you guys let me know if uh i need to look at something more in depth uh all right qg is going to be our natural gas chart nope not ready to look at gc There we go. Uh, natural gas, I'm counting in this larger diagonal off of the June 2020 low. ABC up, we held an ABC retrace that we can count as a running flat for the wave two here. And have been moving along nicely, filling out the start of the A of this parentheses wave three. Minimal target for the parentheses wave three is gonna be the 5.67 region rather see it head closer to the 6.9s um, but our resistance for this a wave is really going to start here at 411 and extend up towards 465. Um, this looks good as the a b um, my only concern and maybe this is five up here and three back for a one two so it does look like maybe that can reach closer to the 460s we can go ahead and add those subwaves because that doesn't look too bad actually. And we'll put the fibs in place 
for this circle wave C inside the A. Um, that looks like we're projecting pretty extended fibs um, for the C wave itself, um, but we have the benefit of this looking like a good one-two structure that fits with that proportionally, as well as looking at a high probability zone as 411 to 465 um, based on this larger diagonal structure. Um, so immediate support, certainly the 312 uh, level, if not maybe even closer to 320s. Now there's some questions. All right, great. Uh, Zach, can you explain how SPY might have 3 to 4% upside based on the charts before we turn down, um, but looks like IWR has a much bigger upside? Um, so they don't have the exact same counts. Um, they are potentially different places, not just different degrees, but different places. But in general, um, the NASDAQ and the, I and the Russell are, um, have greater magnitude movement. They have much higher beta relative to the S&P market, which is the baseline for beta measurements. Um, so usually those are going to be more volatile and have bigger magnitude moves, both to the upside and to the downside. Um, but they are also in different places. Um, we will look at GDX. Let's um, finish talk. I'll take the, these questions and we'll look at the metals first and we'll look at GDX. Uh, Zach, Avi mentioned that you'd be working on another stock wave setup list for the next deeper low. Um, so again, what Garrett and I are looking for is, um, oops, there we go. Um, Garrett and I are looking for a decent consolidation that we can count either as just the, the minor degree wave four, or at least as this wave four. That could coincide with Avi's wave two, although we're just not gonna be labeling it as a two, um, but it will be valid for Avi's wave two. Um, but most of the charts that we are interested in do look like they can either get wave twos during this consolidation or just part of the rest of that wave four. Um, but that is going to be where we're going to be looking for, um, you know, we want to see some of that, a good chunk of that move starting to fill out before we publish, um, before we post that list uh, to Stockwaves. Um, but he just wanted to get out that as a good teaser well in advance. Uh, IWM, Mikal is going to be just the same as the RTY. Um, it's just the, uh, the, the ETF that tracks the, the Russell. And so we looked at the RTY as the Russell futures. Um, Matt says, hedging instruments of choice are highly personal, but curious what you use. Uh, volatility is so low that you don't get paid much for OTM calls. Uh, reverse OTF seem like a good option, but curious what you use. Um, so for a degree this size, even though I think it, there's a good chance that it's the fourth, um, the way that I'm starting to, to look at this is, you know, I know that we want to see a move um, probably under the 4,000 region, most likely. That might be achieved in just the A wave, um, but a move back down under or towards the 4,000 region or into the 3,900s seems very likely, but I'm not really positioning myself much in line for that yet. Um, I do think that it could happen before the end of the summer. Um, so one of the ways that I'm starting to layer into a position like that is looking at S&P and SPY butterflies um, for an expiration sometime in August or maybe getting some in September. I, I have the problem with butterflies is you really need to get the timing right for them to be more effective than vertical spreads, which Leo will explain in great deal in his service, um, a Gamma Optimizer service. Um, if you get the right move, but have too much time, you do get gains, but in a, in a using a put butterfly, but it might even be less gains than you would have gotten by just going with a vertical put spread targeting, you know, the 4,000 region or below uh, for August or September. So if I use anything for September or October, which I probably will because I, I expect to get this move, I'm really not layering into much of anything yet and looking for the potential for things to go higher. So I'm kind of putting 
some limit orders to to get a few you know little placeholder positions and in case maybe it, it spikes up to complete real quick and then just starts to break support pretty fast as a more sudden move i feel like i already have some exposure so that keeps me from trying to chase things using the es futures to trade the downside um, that's usually what i do mostly is is i look for those those opportunities to hedge and i just see you know okay how much you know, delta for my overall portfolio, do I want to try and hedge for? And I'll buy an appropriate number of ES contracts um, or short an appropriate number of ES contracts um, to to capture that um, or, or offset as much as I feel like I need to. Um, but, I, or I'll also be looking at some individual ETFs that have a more clear path or structure for some potential downside. But most of the hedging that I'll do will be when we have something that looks like an A wave and then something that looks like a B wave. And then we have even more defined potential for a C wave down. Um, so in the meantime, I'm just tightening up stops, raising a little bit of cash, you know, setting some things on trailing stops and adjusting, you know, rolling out of some, you know, vertical call spreads that are you know nicely green and and shifting those into maybe something much much smaller um but a little bit more aggressive and banking a lot of the profit there so i still feel like i'm i'm exposed for that potential extension but i'm not overexposed in case you know it decides to start a fourth wave early um All right, hold on, slow down the questions, guys, so I can get through, get, get to something. All right, two days ago, you were looking for a B wave down. Um, yeah, so that, that's what we just talked about in the ES chart. Um, uh, Shino, that, that ideally we get a B wave consolidation in that small, that final fifth. Um, and that can coincide with maybe a wave two that we we're talking about in the Dow, but that would be a little bit more of a consolidation down towards say 42.20 to, to 42.10, um, and then a move up towards 4,300. Um, all right, if using trailing stops, uh, what price level would you set and typical not to trail? That all varies. And, and Garrett and I, like we, and a lot of us on the site talk about doing things, thinking of things in terms of tranches. So I have a third of my position that I plan to keep. I have a third that maybe I wanna exit now or set a very tight stop on. And maybe a third of my position that I wanna try and, and, and exit at a, at a higher level. So either I'll set a trailing stop and maybe give it that room of right now, you know, we're looking for some consolidation as the B wave inside this fifth. And that has support in the 4220 to 4210 region ideally. Could get lower than that and still pop up, um, but at this point, you know, the immediate, the key immediate level of support is the 4160 level. Um, John, we can talk about um, XLE and XOP in the Stockways webinar tomorrow, but I am still holding the gush um, that I'm looking for for the, the C of three on those moves. Um, Sam asks, is there anything wrong with counting the wave one as three waves up into the April 20th high? Um, let's go back to this larger chart here. There's not. Um, there's a lot of, of charts, and particularly a lot of large caps that Garrett and I are following, um, where this was clearly an ABC move up into April, and they got a bigger retrace, and that looks like a wave one and a wave two of an ending diagonal. And for a lot of those, this looks like maybe an A, B, and a C wave completing the third, and so they could get a deeper fourth wave in a diagonal, or some of those look like they might only be an A and a B and setting up for a bigger move as the C wave of the third in the diagonal um, because they're, they're a little bit further behind. And so maybe those are some of the ones that can outperform. Um, I don't think that's the best count for the um, index itself, um, but it is certainly valid. You can count this as the wave one ABC up for wave one. It's a very, very small wave two, particularly for a diagonal. Um, it's not that much smaller than this as a wave two really, but for a diagonal that is very small. And then you can count this as the A wave and then five waves up completing for the C of three. And so still, even if you're gonna apply that count, 
you're still looking for a fourth wave consolidation here. And if it was a parentheses wave four already, I mean, that could drop all the way down towards the 3,500 region. Um, it would be a bigger A, B, C move down. So the same 3,900 region that we're looking for is support for the fourth here, whichever degree fourth it is in the impulse, might be just the A wave, and you'd still get a really good bounce off of that. So another one of the reasons, you know, the, the way that I like to look at alternatives, but within the context of where does that alternative overlap with what I, what I think should be seen, and then say, okay, maybe I do need to be concerned about that bigger fourth wave, but that B wave bounce is certainly a tradable move. So maybe I don't want to go all in aggressive on my entire portfolio for what might end up being just a B wave bounce. But I certainly, if I see an ABC completing here into the 3900s, that's an opportunity to, to, to go long, um, even knowing that it might only be a corrective bounce back up towards the 4100s um, before getting a bigger drop. Um, that's still a very, very tradable move. Um, all right, could you please comment on your preferred count? Uh, I really don't have a preferred count on RTY. Um, it is very, very messy right here, at, at least in terms of the smaller degree. Um, my preferred count, you know, and, and that's why one of the reasons why I also use color coding is, you know, anything that I have labeled in white is quite often my primary count. Um, the only difference between these being that if we're still jumbled around and working on the, the minor degree wave four, then, and we've already topped in the minor degree wave three implied by the purple note here, then the 2800 region is going to be the resistance for the parentheses wave three, um, as opposed to the 3125 level, if we're still just in this three to 2600 and then get a fourth and a fifth wave up higher. So that's my primary count, is that we're still inside this primary wave five, we're still inside the third of the primary wave five, but could potentially get a fourth and a fifth wave, and then another fourth and a fifth, or maybe are already in this fifth wave up towards 2800, it's just not clear enough um, on the art Russell itself. And keep in mind, the Russell is over a thousand stocks, um, that are is kind of equal weight from lots and lots of different sectors. So the only thing that they have in common is that they're smaller companies. So the, the, the counts for those individual companies are vastly different. It is sometimes astonishing to me that something like the Russell would have clarity at all, much less more clarity than that, that it had earlier in the year. Um, so you know, we have plenty of small caps that look like they could be set to really outperform. And we have a lot of them that don't look very bullish. Um, so picking and choosing will be very, very good. You know, the ones that look really, really bullish could certainly carry the Russell higher, even while some of those other things falter. Um, Alberto says, Russell, way four in your view, how likely is the triangle is not finished? If it's a triangle, um, if it's a triangle, it, at this point, a triangle should never break the lower trend line. If you get a higher low and you're inside a triangle, other than maybe just a nominal little break um, it, it, of, of the trend line, maybe, but it should not get under 2111. So that's certainly going to be an indicator, but it really doesn't look like a triangle so much anymore with this move higher over that top trend line. So if it was a triangle, then it completed here or here. Um, maybe it was a triangle from here as A, B, C, D, E. Um, it, it, it looks triangle-ish, but it doesn't actually conform to a triangle. Um, so I think more importantly is just to look at this structure off of the low um, and, and scalp based on this and say, if this can hold the, the 2250 region, then it's golden. If it breaks 2200, then it invalidates anything bullish off of the setup and easily is dropping down closer to 2050 or maybe even under 2000. 
Um, it, the so the Nasdaq in terms of downside potential. I mean, the the problem is that there are some names within the Nasdaq that can be more bullish, and maybe that makes it hold that that the the combination of things that do start to falter and correct versus the things that pick up the mantle and some of those small caps maybe ends up making it hold a pretty high relatively shallow consolidation for this fourth wave that maybe chops around a lot in in just continues to kind of expand the range before it sets up as an actual a and a b after all of that chop and then gets a big c wave down to finish off the move so stuff like this, you know, set up here where you're still looking higher, trading for this fourth wave can be very, very frustrating. Um, so there aren't necessarily a lot of good ways to trade that other than maybe looking at some of those things that very clearly look like they're coming into more significant tops and maybe trying to sell some premium um, with, you know, selling vertical call spreads that are far enough out of the money that you're not going to get into trouble with enough time for, you know, to get some extension and, and then maybe to fall back from that. And so starting to layer into that kind of a position because the upside certainly does look more limited, but there's no clear setup for immediate downside either. Um, so, Joanne, I think we talked a little bit about reconciling the, the, the Dow and the S&P, and I think a lot of it just has to do mostly with the weighting. Um, VIX is not connected directly to the S&P. I mean, it's a measure of volatility. It's not just an inverse. So, um, you know, when you get volatility, the, the VIX goes up. Um, when volatility falls, sometimes that's a condition for the market to head higher. Um, but you could have rising volatility and a rising market, um, or you could have a market that is heading lower, but volatility doesn't really creep up so much. So if you're trying to only trade VIX, as far as long VIX as a, as a way of, of trading for downside in the S&P, um, sometimes you could be very frustrated by that. All right, before we run out of time, let's go to take a quick look at the metals and at GDX. Um, let's go to the bigger chart here. Uh, we did want to see a little bit more of a, a cleaner fourth and a fifth wave up in gold, um, but we can squeeze in five waves up and it certainly got high enough after what we were counting as the third um, to count as um, our wave one in our primary wave five here. And the sell-off that we got, um, we'll go to our primary tab, um, came right to a 618 retrace, and we are trying to make some moves off of that low. So we can count an A, B, C consolidation. Maybe this is one, two, three, four, and we need a better fifth wave down, in which case we'd be looking for an extension to 1728 if it can't hold the 1760s right here. But ideally, the 1763 is going to hold as the 618 retrace in the one, two start to our larger primary wave five in gold. Um, that should be pretty bullish for companies that are have fundamentals tied to the cost per ounce of the shiny stuff that they dig out of the ground. Um, wave one of that parentheses, wave three, should ideally target around 1900, and that should be a five wave up move. Let's take a quick look at silver, but it's not as clean of a chart. Um, I'm not as much of a fan of, of silver, but again, we can count off of our wave four here in March. We can squeeze in five waves up, an A, B, C retrace to a 618 and trying to turn up off of that. So far, nothing too exciting, only three waves up off of that low. Maybe it's gonna drop down to the 2480s, um, but holding 2560 would really be ideal. Um, wave one of three should probably target somewhere around 2925 to 2950 as five waves up. And if we zoom out here, we can see the larger projection for that move. 100% the measured move is at 31, 1382 at 3350, 1618 at 35. Um, 3536 is kind of a normal extension region for the parentheses wave five, 
but subwave structure implies that we might be getting closer to the 38 to 41 region for that top. All right, and let's take a look at GDX. Nope, wrong tab. There we go. Um, GDX, as we've talked about before, um, Garrett and I are counting this because of the size of the move. It's a little bit too big to count reliably as a fourth, but this was too big to count as a wave one, even though we have some individual names that look like a one, two, and some where it looks like one, two, three, four inside the wave three, the larger wave three. Um, we're splitting the difference on a lot of them and calling it an A and a B inside the primary wave three, and this is a diagonal instead of a larger impulse. But the structure here is the same. We have five waves up and an ABC retrace to a 618. So we're looking for a three, four, and a five. And that proportionally puts it into the 60s, maybe up into the 70s. The 100% extension for a C wave is all the way up at 8670, but that seems a little bit excessive. Um, given the, the FIB levels that we're looking at for the primary wave three itself. So we're trying to, to keep this a little bit more muted in terms of what our expectations are. And we'll certainly adjust that in, you know, if it wants to prove itself to be even more bullish to get up to 86, great, we're gonna be positioned for it. Um, but in the meantime, we're looking for a move towards the 3940 region as five waves up for just wave one of this third ideally holding the 3390s that we hit as the 618 retrace. The next support, if it's not going to hold immediately there, if it is going to get maybe a one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave of C lower, um, like we talked about in gold and silver, would be the 3265 level. Um, and we do have just a few more minutes before we run out of time, so let's go ahead and take a look at TLT, which we've done before. Um, remember, TLT is kind of a blend between the 30-year and the 10-year bonds. It is an intermediate, I think the mandate for TLT is to be an intermediate duration treasury, which is about 20 plus years, they say. So it does lean a little bit more towards the 30-year, and I think that is evident in the counts that we see, um, but it is a mix. So it's not, it doesn't follow the futures um, so completely, but so far, um, I am looking for just one move higher as the fifth of the C wave of our orange wave four. It, in order for it to prove to be more than this wave four, we not only need it to get significantly and sustainedly over the 150 region, but we need it to do so as five waves up. So, so far, even if this is more bullish than an A, B, and a C, I would count this as an ABC up. It's clearly this is an ABC move. So this might be wave one, and this is wave two, and this could be an A, B, C for the three. If this is the fourth, though, of a leading diagonal, it might need to get a deeper fourth wave first. So maybe it gets more of a B wave bounce and then comes down as a fourth, and then would get an A, B, C up for wave five um, above the 150 zone. And that would be one, two, three, four, and five waves up. Then it would need to hold a corrective retrace at a higher low than it got in May. I mean, in March. So at this point, I'm I'm just looking for that one move higher, and then I'm going to take all of my chips down and look for the potential for that one more low, which could be a pretty violent, strong move down towards the 126 to 124 region. Maybe it falls short and doesn't actually get much lower than 133.50, um, but we can't rely on it not getting more than that. Um, and then that address. When I say all my chips down, I mean more my short term. I'm still going to have some longer term exposure to treasury bonds because, as we've talked about also before, the large account is very close to a bottom, even if it does or doesn't get that one more low. Um, we're, we're pretty close to the bottom of a primary wave B, setting up for a move to substantial new highs um, as a final blow off top rally. Um, so as long as uh, we are not breaking too far under the 145 region, 
I'm going to still hold some exposure for this larger swing move here. Um, but uh, most of that I'm looking to take down um, and, and be ready for a fifth wave down in orange to get that um, to buy on that one more low. Uh, similar to the TLT, I think this can count as the fourth wave inside the fifth of C. So looking for one more leg up towards the 163s. Um, resistance is 165 to 166. All right, we'll go ahead and end it there and I'll get this uploaded for you guys. We did uh, right at six o'clock on the nose. All right, have a great evening.